Just in case you needed another reason to be disgusted with the predatory monetization tactics employed by publishers such as EA, the BBC has a report up right now about a family whose bank account was cleaned out because their kids were playing FIFA. Four children were playing FIFA on the Switch and managed to spend over half a grand between the four of them trying to get their favourite player for FIFA Ultimate Team. Suckered in by the glorified gambling that we know as loot boxes and EA tries to pass off as surprise mechanics. Over the course of three weeks, these four kids spent nearly £550. It all started when their father, named in the article as Thomas Carter, bought them a single pack for FIFA Ultimate Team but didn't notice that they were paying attention to how he did it and replicated his actions to make purchase after purchase. The kids were all under the age of 10, were of course very sorry when they learned what they'd done and it said they didn't understand the impact of what they were doing because of course they didn't, they were kids playing a game that sold to kids. And while I know damn well there are loads of people now saying, well, he should have taken precautions, he should have taken safeguards, you shouldn't have to need to take precautions to protect your bank account from a game you bought, full price I might add, for your children to enjoy. Such is the insidious nature of microtransactions and loot box gambling based mechanics. These small little spends are designed so that people, adults as well as kids, don't really take into account what they're spending, exactly how much they're spending, until it's too late. In this case, Thomas Carter's wife found out what had happened when she tried to buy something else and the card got declined. All because the children were trying to get their favourite player in FIFA Ultimate Team and, by the way, after cleaning out their parents' bank account, they didn't get him. Now, the father did take some of the responsibility. He did shoulder that burden. The article says, Mr. Carter from Hampshire admits that he did not take full precautions to limit access to his Nintendo account. He did not use a unique PIN number and the emailed receipts were sent to an old email address with a full inbox. I just never thought the children would do it, he said. And that last part, that last quote is an important point. He didn't think the children would do it. Now, if you watch this channel, there's a good chance you're pretty clued in as to how the industry behaves, how this monetization works. Most of us who are steeped in video games, who are that deep into the industry, you know, we know what goes on. We tend to buy and play a lot of video games and have gotten pretty used to the monetization we see in them. To those of us who do play a lot of video games and see a lot of monetization, it would strike us as obvious that you should take steps, that you should take precautions. But the average punter, the average customer on the street, they don't think about this stuff. They usually don't have to. I think it's very believable, in fact I think it's also quite obvious, that the average parent who isn't all that into video games wouldn't consider this outcome. It makes sense to me that the average parent wouldn't have it cross their minds that the football game they bought for their children could bankrupt them. I mean it's such a s when you actually think about it, when you try and distance yourself from it, distance yourself from what you know about the video game industry, how fucking absurd that these video games that you already buy up front have the potential to clean your bank account out. Of course that doesn't cross the mind of the average customer because it's such a fucking ludicrous idea that it becomes damn near abstract. Most parents know not to give kids access to their credit cards. It makes total logical sense that you don't want to give your kids unfettered financial access to a storefront that sells video games. But ultimately, when you really stop and think about it, it's such a weird idea that video games have foisted upon us. That the video games themselves have storefronts that sell deceptively small little microtransactions with gambling hooks. That it's no wonder families end up in this situation. Nintendo didn't comment for the article, but they have refunded the family, so that's something nice. Electronic Arts fucking cowards that they are also declined to comment but gave the BBC a link to their guidelines on controlling in-game purchases. Now EA, fuck off. You spineless little fucks. You shit-eating worms. That's not a response and that sure as shit doesn't exonerate you but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's first talk about how these simpering toads haven't actually commented. EA never addresses this. They never address- there are many stories about people who have overspent on FIFA. The BBC article itself brings up one such example of a guy who spent $10,000 over two years in FIFA but didn't comprehend the gravity of that expenditure until he issued EA with a freedom of information 
information request so that he could see the figures in black and white. Because again, that's how microtransactions work. They're designed to be little spends in little amounts here and there so you don't actually think about it until you see it all totted up. But you won't see EA talk about that. You don't see them comment on these articles that come out, and there are many news stories about people who have spent stupid amounts of money in FIFA, not because they're stupid, but because they've been targeted by exploitative predatory monetization. We discussed in a recent video how microtransactions have been designed willfully, purposefully, to target people with shopping addictions, with gambling addictions, with all sorts of issues that make them ripe targets for what the industry loves to call recurrent user spending. And these snakes, these fucking bastards, never address it. They'll talk about how ethical they think their surprise mechanics are. They'll defend monetization as a reality, an unfortunate reality of the business, but they never talk about their victims, their targets, their prey. And they need to be held to account for this. Electronic Arts, whenever one of their executives are interviewed by the games media, should be asked about this constantly. It should always be the first question. What about shopping addicts, gambling addicts? What about people who were lulled in by the small amounts that microtransactions ask for? So they're tricked into not thinking about how much they're actually spending. They should be asked that all the time. The next time someone gets an interview with an EA executive, with a VP, with Andrew Wilson, the question should always be asked. They should always be answering for this. Stop giving people like Andrew Wilson a fucking puff pieces and make the snide little fucker answer for himself. Answer for the way he routinely tricks customers. His company routinely dupes them. As for EA's practice of linking reporters to their fucking guidelines on controlling in-game purchases, that is not the bloody defense that Electronic Arts thinks it is. That actually is damning for EA. Because again, stop and think how absurd that is. Someone buys a video game with the intention of just taking that video game home and enjoying it, and they're expected to read precautionary guidelines so that the video game they bought doesn't financially fuck them. I tell you what, Electronic Arts, you wanna play this fucking game? Should we start campaigning to take this to its logical conclusion? The slapping of gigantic warning labels all over your video game cover art? Like the Surgeon General warnings on cigarettes? Do you wanna go that way? Cause I can go that way. I'm happy to go that way. Let's do it. You think that guidelines on controlling purchases, you think that guidelines and cautions and warnings are the best way to safeguard people against your video games? Fine, let's take it to that logical conclusion. Let's get Surgeon General style warnings all over your fucking video game, all over its store shelf, all over its page on a digital storefront. As the BBC article notes, FIFA 19 has been certified as suitable for players from the age of three. Well, it's not, is it? It's clearly not. And I've always said, my whole thing about microtransactions and loot boxes does not come from a place of, won't somebody please think of the children? I think their predatory nature affects people of all ages. But at the same time, we have to admit that if a video game needs safeguards, needs warnings, needs precautions to protect children from the monetization in that video game, well, it shouldn't be rated as suitable for kids. Slap a fucking M rating on it, then we'll see how dedicated to loot boxes Electronic Arts really is. Then we'll see how ethical and fun EA's surprise mechanics are. This news story coming on top of recent videos where I've talked about exactly how manipulative and malignant this monetization in video games has become completely galvanizes my belief in what I've been arguing for for more than this generation. For years and years and years, long before it became on vogue to be talked about, the warnings, the endless warnings I've leveled at people, at, at the companies themselves even, never to be listened to until it was too late. And even though it has become more popular to finally start addressing this, it's clear that so much more needs to be done, so much more criticism needs to be thrown at these video games. No, barely video games, these live services, these husks, these aggressively monetized 
advertised pieces of garbage masquerading as video games. Also that multi-millionaires and billionaires can have more cash than they would ever realistically need in their lifetimes and the lifetimes of their entire fucking families. I mean, they already have more cash than they and their families will ever need and they somehow always want more. And their companies rake in millions and millions and billions and billions in revenue gained from this wholly unethical monetization. And that money gets to go into tax havens so they don't fucking pay anything back and they research ever more duplicitous ways to rake even more money out of you and me. The so-called triple A video game industry is thoroughly broken. And you want to know the most broken part? It's that it's not actually broken. This is all working as intended. And there are some people out there who still wonder why we say things like fuck EA. Oh, and by the way, fuck EA.